Hello, this is Paul Lennon, and uh, I want to address this uh, uh, what's it, COVID-19 issue today. And the title is, What's God Got to Do with COVID-19? This is me. This is Paul Lennon. I'm a 77-year-old uh, Irish-born guy who, uh, who uh, lived in Ireland, was born in Ireland, and... Uh, then I moved to Spain, I lived in Italy, then to Mexico, then to the U.S. of A. And here I am now in Guatemala as a retired, uh, whatever, okay? Former uh, priest, former Irish priest, 77-year-old former Irish priest. And I, I'm just uh, kind of sick and tired of guys, of everybody talking about the coronavirus, what it's called, the COVID-19. And all these religious folks are giving their interpretation. So we've got everybody giving their two cents. And some of the sense are really nonsense. They're kind of, uh, you know, in left field. So I'm kind of sick and tired of this. I want to give my two cents here for what it's worth. And you'll, you know, you can choose for yourself. You think what it's, you know, if there's anything good here, you know. It reminded me of that song by, you know, by Tina Turner, for goodness sake, you know. Well, what's God got, what's, what's God got to do with this? Everybody's saying this, that, and the other. What's God got to do with it? We're going to be talking serious stuff here. Okay. So, so either, you know, what's God got to do with this? We think because God is everywhere, whatever, and we, we kind of have God up our sleeve, and we can kind of manipulate God and, and bring him out now when we need him. Forgive me, folks. This is not going to be a nice talk. Okay. So what have we got here? We're talking about COVID, and we want to put this in a religious context, okay? And because I'm an ex-priest, so I'm going to talk about the, the, Catholic, the Christian context uh, and the Catholic context because I'm building on my own training as a, as a priest, studied uh, scholastic philosophy and theology and all that kind of thing. And then, of course, I've, I've studied in, uh, in psychology, too. And, uh, but not, I'm not excluding other religions here because just imagine this, guys. I mean, the great religions have been reflecting on this, on these issues of evil or bad things that happen for the past thousands of years. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling skeptical when my brother here comes out with his theory of the day. You know, very, very intelligent people, more intelligent than me and you are. Don't be offended. Have been reflecting on these issues for thousands of years, as we know, Catholic Christians, Catholics have been reflecting on this for two thousand years. So great thinkers have been in this, you know, and um, and the Jewish religion has been thinking about it for before, you know, another two thousand years before that, and then the Asian religions for another two or how many years before that. 6,000 years of religious thought, and you're coming up to me, you know, and you're, you're reading your Bible, forgive me. You say, oh, I know what's happening here. No, or I'm reading the book of Apocalypse, and now this is looking really serious. So cut the crap, for goodness sake, you know. Okay. So I say, that we've been thinking about this for a long time. So I'm leery about these newfangled ideas, and, you know, I'm picking these solutions out of your hat. You know, I have to wrap it out of the hat now, and, and Mr. So-and-so is preaching in the, the church of God knows who, you know, and all this kind of stuff, you know. And uh, we as Catholics, um, many people, we're floundering around here. And the Pope is trying to say something that's not kind of out of order. I think he's been very cautious because... He's seeing what you're, what I'm seeing. You know, everybody's kind of bouncing off the walls here. God, what's the latest, latest interpretation of this? You know, or well, what does it mean? You know, what does it mean here? What's going on here? God wants to punish us. Now, that's what, there's a whole bunch of uh, theories that go along with this. If you want to buy on this, if you want to buy into this, that's okay. You know, that's that's your deal. You know, that's your deal. So God, in general, God wants to punish us. God is angry, you know. Uh, okay, so there's a big projection. This is called anthropomorphism. I think that's what it's called, right? When we project onto God our human emotions or our human way of thinking. So when bad things happen, we have to think someone is, you know, hey, daddy, daddy told me to, to stay at home today, so he must be angry at me. So God, you know, God told us to stay at home now for two or three months. God must be angry. He wants to really 
teach us a lesson. You know, hey, this God, he's a kind of a nasty kind of an asshole. Sorry, forgive me. He's a nasty person, this God, you know, and uh, he wants to tell us, he wants to teach us. There's some lesson here we have to learn. We're all searching for lessons now. All of a sudden, we become great, great theologians and philosophers. We're all looking for lessons. But, you know, what happens if there's no lesson? Oh, I'm an atheist. No, not necessarily. You know, okay. Uh, you know, so so God is this angry person who, uh, it, it, wherever he is, you know, he's in heaven or something. And, and, and you know, and uh, a certain person said uh, not too long ago. Don't be looking for places when it comes to God, you know, because if God is a spirit, he's not in any particular place because place is a material thing. So let's wake up here. OK, sorry, chaps. Um, oh, yeah, repent. We're big on the repentance now in repentance. And see, the problem then, the temptation for all the churches, forgive me, I'm, 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 putting, I'm questioning all the churches now that we want to kind of harvest this for our church. In other words, we want to bring members into our church. We want to take advantage of this freaking tragedy that's hitting humanity now at the moment. And we want to gar we want to garnet that, we want to harvest that, excuse me, for our church. We want to get people into our church or into our way of thinking or to be converted to the truth. God, forgive us for using your holy word in vain. <laughs> truth. Okay, so that's, take it easy. Okay, so, so that's the other temptation, you know. Hey, I have the solution here. I'm going to tell you what, what's going down. You, know? you better get yourself together, man, before you start, you know, preaching, before you, okay, resolve some of your own problems. So I think that you can well be categorized in this kind of thing, the angry God, uh, repent, I don't know what it is. God is teaching us a lesson. Now God is a teacher. Now he, Gave him the put another hat on God. He's a teacher now. First of all, he's Mr. Angry. He's like your angry dad. Okay, well, no, 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 please. No, uh, God, no, no. You're projecting on God your own traumas and your own childhood or whatever, abusive childhood, please. Okay. Now we got the 10 plagues of Egypt. That's another one, too. You know, we like that. I think the Jews and the, and the Catholics and the Christians, we can kind of get on the bandwagon of the 10 plagues. Okay. Gee, Chris, man, what's going on here? bunch of charlatans and uh, a lot of people a lot of these folks uh, you know uh, they're all looking for the answer in the bible well i don't know if the answer is in the bible i mean quoting scriptures and that kind of thing and especially the old testament that i think it went as far as the book of job as regards you know the book of wisdom okay let's not knock the jewish religion the old testament the Torah and the and the prophets and the books of wisdom, which are uh, precious in the, in the Christian kind of uh, Judeo-Christian tradition. We're not going to knock those either. We're going to be, you know, respectful of those. And, and what can we get out of that? Well, it's in there. There's some wisdom. But I mean, these guys have been asking the question for years, for as I say, for thousands of years. And and uh, who is that uh, the Jewish rabbi who wrote, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, good questions, you know. Okay. and Okay. Scott, whatever his name was. Um, road less traveled and all these guys. Okay. So what, 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 am, what is Paul Lennon going to say to you today? Uh, as I say, so I, I don't think it's literally in, in, in the Bible. Um, so I'm not into literal translation of the Bible even if I believe in the Bible. So, did Jesus say something about this? I don't know. I know that Jesus suffered. And when he was about to suffer, he saw this freight train coming down on top of him. And he was on the tracks. And there was a freight train coming down. And he was saying, oh, my God, <laughs> forgive me. Father, if it be possible, let me out of the way. But... Um, I know I have a mission to fulfill, and so if it can't be avoided, here I am, you know, cruise, let me go through, let me drink the chalice. This was his uh, Jewish way of saying this, let me, let, me, let me accept the suffering, okay, so I don't know, but uh, so, so that's what I want to say, you know, um, 
But let me give you a little bit of a theological reflection here. So we, we, we uh, Christians and we Catholics and uh, even the Jewish people, they go beyond the Bible itself. I think the Jews would have the Talmud and uh, we Christians have, have this whole tradition of tradition, the tradition of tradition, excuse me. And we have um, the teachings and doctrine and all that kind of thing, you know. So what do the, what do the great Catholic thinkers or Christian thinkers think about this? Well, before the uh, Protestant Reformation, uh, we were all reading Thomas Aquinas. And uh, Aquinas was, Aquinas was a philosopher. He was a priest or a brother, or religious or something, right? Forgive me, a Dominican maybe, I don't know. They called him the dumb ox because he looked kind of dumb, but he was very smart. And he would, had this thing about, you know, uh, fides querens intellectum, in Latin for you, you know, from my Gregorian university. So it's faith looking for understanding. It's not just, you know, hey, read your Bible, and if you, if you read the Apocalypse, I'm sure that's going to give you the answer. And uh, don't, don't get me going on this, because the Apocalypse can give you all the answers you want. It's such a, it's such a, it's such a fantastic book, uh, full of imaginations and fantasy, that uh, you can get out of there whatever interpretations you want. So it, I'm, not a, I'm not really into that, okay? But uh, so go back, to, go back to Aquinas. He was a thinker. And what was this? Well, how did he explain this? Uh, the evil. And it, as I say, Christian thinkers, I, this is we're not the first. This is you can say this is an evil. Was well, it? It's something that's not good. It should not happen. Okay. Now we can say that it all came from original sin. We, that's okay if you want to go there too. But that doesn't, you know. So okay. Um, but that just means that, that now human nature is imperfect. That's what it means. That's chapter 3, uh, book of Genesis. Human nature is screwed up. And, and you know, the, the Jewish tradition tried to explain this by saying Adam and Eve, you know, they used, uh, they used their free will badly and then human nature got all screwed up. And thenceforth, uh, suffering and pain in, entered into the good world that God had created in chapter 1 and 2. But again, go back to Aquinas. These kind of things in the Christian tradition are called the permissive will of God. As it, so I have to wrap your brain around that a little bit. In Spanish, I know it better than English, so uh, voluntad permisiva de Dios. I think the right translation would be something like that. The permissive will of God. In other words, God has created the world, but this world for, is an imperfect world. And that, so the, the world is evolving. So this is a case of what happened. Nature going freaking crazy, turning bad, turning against us. So what is God going to do? Now, first of all, God, if God, if God, if he exists, whatever, he's not going to be pushed around, right? He's almighty. He is different from us. As a theologian, he is totally different from us. He's more different from us than he is like us, even though we are his, his image and likeness. But there again, no cheap. No cheap thoughts here, no cheap philosophy or theology, preaching, you know, okay. So remember this, you know, Karl Barth, maybe, some deep uh, non-Catholic thinkers, deep, deep stuff. So God is not obliged to intervene. We, we can't be twisting God's arm. Now we're twisting God's arm. Now we are God and he's our creature. Hey, God, you got to do something. What, God... God created it like this, you know, there's good and there's bad, and there's, there's bad things happen. And uh, that's the way human nature is, I'm sorry to say. And there's good and bad. And, and, and so God who has created this, he, he lets it be. I'm sorry to say, he lets it be. Now, he can give meaning to our suffering. He can help us cope with this. But it doesn't mean to say he's going to take it away from us. I think that's the mistake. So 
But God can give us, if you want to think of God and Jesus, look, whatever you want, I don't mind, okay? So God can help us cope with this, you know, but he's not going to take away this chalice that we have to drink because, because we're human beings in an imperfect world that has tsunamis and it has storms and it has hurricanes and uh, it has uh, famine all over the place. This is just another aspect of that sad reality. So my dear friends, here we are, we're, we're all in this together. Uh, I just hate taking the easy way out and I, I hate taking these superficial, shallow answers that are flying around like right now. That's just me. So I don't have a, the perfect answer for you uh, right now. But I'm, this is the meaning. This is the way I see it. So, uh, you know, let, let us not use God. You know, if we really believe in him or her or it, forgive me, or the spirit, because God is a spirit, doesn't have a sex, actually. Not a sexual being. Yeah. So let, let, let's be let's be a little bit deeper here. I, I, that's my opinion. Okay. Thank you.